Let's have them. Where are you, girl? Thank you, Dr. House, for inviting us here. What a great privilege it is to be here tonight. And as many of these other men have already expressed their love for Dr. House and all that he's done, only the Lord and Dr. House and Brother Roloff knows how much Brother House has helped the Roloff homes. Tonight, I have 12 ladies with me. I always introduce them as the most unusual ladies ensemble in America today. Because I have with me tonight two car thieves, one arsonist, one kidnapper, two or three uh, drug addicts, a couple alcoholics, and uh, <laughs> a couple of them from various uh, occupations we won't mention. But I should have said they used to be. <laughs> Somewhere about 14 years ago, a little wiry preacher that they thought he was an eccentric reared back one day. He said, my church today, your church tomorrow. And most of you men sitting in here tonight as these great heroes walked across, the, tomorrow is here for America. Brother Roloff was a prophet of God that knew what was going to happen in America. Every day someone calls, or I see some of you fellows, you say, are the roll-off homes still open? I want to announce we're still open, we're still taking people in, God's still saving souls and regenerating lives. Yeah. Most of them want to know, is the battle still going on? With Brother House permission, I'd like to take just a moment and tell you what's happening in our home. We're still wide open, taking kids in, taking girls off the street. Our ministry is what you folks throw out in the wash water. We're, uh, I'd like to ask you folks if you do something for us. Next time you get down the street and you see an old prostitute or an old drunk laying on the street, would you pick them up and send them to us? We'd sure like to, we'd sure try to take care of them and win them to Christ. Tonight, Brother and Mrs. Palmer, uh, are facing charges against them. We have 19 girls in a, in a home down there we call the Palmer Home. The welfare department heard we had some young girls under the age of 17, so they brought charges against Brother and Mrs. Palmer. Their daughter was with Brother Roloff when, it, when the plane crashed. Just recently, we've been in a tax battle for the last, I know, I guess 10 years in the courts. And uh, According to the courts, we lost the battle. We lost our tax exemption. We came just recently, within two days, of the sheriff selling all of our property on the courthouse steps. And um, you folks sent in $76,000 to keep our homes together. We appealed to everybody and prayed, and God's people sent the money in. Just the other day, they sent another bill for another $20,000. And, uh, but the homes are still open. Several months ago, I got a letter from the Drug and Alcohol Administration State of Texas telling me that I had to close the Jubilee home for ladies or face $50 a day fine or two years in prison for operating a home uh, without a license. We're still open. They came and investigated us. They haven't, uh, I guess they could come any day and lock my wife and myself up. I don't know. But uh, you might pray about that that uh, they're insisting that the Jubilee Home for Ladies take a license because they say that we're a drug rehabilitation center. 
we told them we work with sinners, all kind of sinners, and not just with drug addicts. The lighthouse, just before we left on this tour, the uh, welfare department, department brought charges against Brother and Mrs. Young in the lighthouse. Young men, uh, they work with men uh, from 17 to 24. These, uh, they happened to have a young boy in there at the age 17. The welfare department found out about it, and uh, uh, the welfare department's brought charges against them, so they'll be going in court. Brother and Mrs. Palmer will be going into court uh, the first or second week of April. My wife and I right now are facing a six million dollar lawsuit against us because we we helped the young lady. But God's hand is still on the ministry. And if it hadn't been for CLA and they're working with us on the six six million dollar lawsuit plus several of these others, uh, I don't know where we would be at today. Uh, Brother David Gibbs and his staff have been so kind, invited us there and worked with us, and they're still working with us. And these ladies are a testimony of what, what you folks have done and uh, by supporting our homes. The Lord Jesus Christ was always ministering to those that nobody else wanted. And uh, if you had seen these girls a few months ago, uh, some of them were sitting in jail. We get them, they probate them to us through the courts. We get custody of these. Some of the ladies, they, they can function normally. But God does a wonderful job in their lives. We've got 36 now that have went through our homes or in college. Or some of them here is in, who is this guy, Bucky Tucker? <laughs> we went out to the college today, and Bucky Tucker told us we just graduated or something out there. I don't know what it was. But uh, some of our kids are here in this college and across America. But we want to thank you for inviting us here. These young ladies want to sing and tell you what Jesus Christ has done for them. Girls, you sing. Someone, someone, bless this man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but he is united in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Hi, my name is, hi, my name is Darlene Cole. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Greenville, Ohio. Hi, my name is Sally Holbert. I'm 28. I'm from Joliet, Illinois. Hi, I'm Michelle Mordeshevsky. I'm 29. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Hi, I'm Debbie Bowdish. I'm 21 from Sturgis, Michigan. Hi, my name is Tammy Cargill. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Elgin, Illinois. Hi, my name is Patricia Davis. I'm 32 years old and I'm from Butler, Missouri. Hi, my name is Marie Kemp. I'm 23 and I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Angela Schumann. I'm 21 and I'm from Willis, Michigan. Hi, my name is Darla Jewitty. I'm 18 years old from Dublin, California. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tanya Dowse. I'm 19 I'm from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Hi, my name is Amy Smith. I'm 20 years old from Michigan. Hi, I'm Don Moore. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Spearman, Texas. <laughs> Just an old rejected rally on the auction block. They decided to throw me away. The auctioneer asked who will take her. The room was quiet and still. Till Jesus stepped forward and he said, I will. If you had known me before I knew him, you'd understand why I love him. If you had known me before I knew him, you'd understand my love. I was lonely and defeated before.
Hi, my name is Michelle, and this has got to be one of the biggest privileges I've ever experienced. Um, I came to the homes back in December because Satan had completely destroyed my life. Um, I was saved at the time, but um, he had gotten hold of me again after I had accepted Jesus, only because I didn't follow God's commandment. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't separate myself from the world. Most of all, my friends. I just my friends meant more to me than anything. I wasn't meant to be that way. I wasn't born a misfit or an orphan. I had the most loving parents a child could want, and to this day they're still loving me, even though I, I hurt them so much. But I was just like your daughter or your niece or your sister. I could have even been born the preacher's daughter. Um, I, 